<laughs> I was going to add, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on it too. Um, so here's, here's my um, quick, uh, quick answer to that, so to say, is that, you know, in, in hypnosis, we kind of clear our mind and in meditation, we clear our mind. But in hypnosis, it's, it's more about focusing on one thing that you want to change in your life. Okay. So we kind of like clear our mind of almost all thoughts and then focus in on one thing that we want to make an impact or a change in our life. Whereas in meditation, a lot of times it's really just about clearing your mind and, you know, and just being. Okay, that's, so, that's an, that's so an easy relax explanation. Yeah. The relaxation part is, you know, almost identical. As a matter of fact, you know, my, my go-to induction where I help you to relax your body one, one muscle at a time, so to say, mm -hmm. you know, from the feet up is, you know, that's, you know, I, I, even in my hypnosis class, I teach that as, as the primary induction, but there are yoga instructors, there are massage therapists, is, you know, pretty much anyone that does any kind of guided meditation uses some variation of that. I mean, my version has a lot of hypnotic language built into it, but it, it's basically, you know, relax your body uh, progressively. And as you do that, you relax the body and then the mind follows, you know, so, so in following with the theme for today, uh, mindlessness, right? <laughs> So kind of a funny thing to discuss in a mindful meditation. Let's talk about mindlessness, right? Because, you know, as I, as I put in the email, you know, I was thinking about it like, you know, we're mindful, but I don't know about everybody else, but my, my mind is like overfull. <laughs> I, I got to clear some of that chatter just so that I could even be here doing this on a Thursday night because there's just so much going on. And, you know, I have, I have people telling me that, you know, they're, they're kind of like enjoying life almost like a pre-retirement. And I, I don't get that because with, with this uh, shift in the world, I, I've been busier than I've been in months. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's crazy. And I, you know, I, I don't even want to try and explain it because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to undo any, because it's all good, you know, it, and, you know, I feel I feel blessed and it's things that I focus on and you know a lot of things I've studied a lot of people know me from law of attraction groups and things that I've done I'm a huge fan of uh, synchronicities and how to manifest synchronicities and create them and you know a lot of that even mind body healing you know I have a, I have a client uh, tomorrow actually who you know he had a stroke and he lost uh, part of his vision. So he went to every medical doctor, they did every kind of test on him and they, they can't find any medical reason for his vision issues. Mm -hmm. So with hypnosis, you know, and, and a, couple of his, uh, a couple of his doctors actually recommended and one of his family members that he respects uh, mentioned it to his wife and then she called me and made an appointment because he, he's open to exploring the metaphor of what it is that he doesn't want to see in his life. Wow. So, you know, the, the, there's lots of cool things to do and, and it kind of ties in. It's interesting because I think I attracted it through, I, ju I just finished an audio book by Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, one, of, one of his best books. It's called The Biology of Belief. And it's, it's almost a promotion for hypnosis, but at the end, you know, he really gets into talking about how our mind and our thoughts can affect our physical body on a cellular level that, you know, people can create health or sickness based upon their thoughts, you know, and, and shift from one to the other just as quickly as, as not. So, you know, a lot of, I think, you know, and, and Wayne Dyer used to talk about dis-ease, right? So, you know, dis-ease or incurable, you know, so incurable, he would say is curable from within, you know, there, there are certain things like a cold, you know, things that they, there's no known cure for the common cold, but 
in fact, there really is, and, and a lot of it is overlooked in terms of uh, dietary things and things that we allow into our mind that can create sickness or can conversely create health. So what, what I really want to focus on tonight is, you know, we, we've done stuff on self-talk, but what I really want is for you to think about this kind of negative uh, self-talk, this negative chatter, this stuff that pulls us mm -hmm. off our A game, this stuff that, you know, if we, you know, forget about meditation and all the positive benefits for a minute, but if we could just clear that chatter and just have some quiet for a minute, <laughs> then, then we could make huge shifts by leaps and bounds. I mean, you know, Phyllis, you were mentioning about them, you know, banging on your roof. So, right. It, it, it was probably <laughs> pretty noisy while they were doing that, but now that they're done, it probably seems quieter than yeah, before they yeah. started. Right. Because of the, yeah. the contrast, you know, and Carol missed well, up. I got a roof put on today, Carol. <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of times in our lives, you know, we, we need that, that law of contrast, you know, so everybody, uh, it's just myself and Phyllis that I see that are on video, but I'll, I'll trust you to just do this. Everyone hold out your hand in front of you and look at your hand and realize that the only reason that you can see your hand is because everything around it is not hand. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. So, I'm going to pull a plug so, out. I hope I don't disconnect myself from life, but... I'm so much uh, the phone's gonna ring in a session. Sometimes in our life, we, you know, we need that contrast to really start paying attention to to the good things in our life. You know, things kind of pull us off track. So, but really, this is about paying attention to that inner voice, that critical inner voice that um, that kind of tells us stuff that is not the most encouraging voice in our life and what we want to do is is we want to be able to quiet that voice in a way that we can allow the the better voice or the better thoughts in our mind to be the lead rather than the follower and you know it's it's not about you know it's not about eliminating them. It's about diluting them sometimes. So I use, I use this analogy that if you imagine a big fat of um, hot black liquid, like a clear vat of hot black liquid, and you know, those represent the, the negative thoughts in our mind, negative self-talk or, or things that pull us off of our A game. And you know, then we like, we go to a class or we do a meditation, or we read a book, or we listen to an audio. And each one of those is like a glass of cool, clear liquid that we kind of pour into this vat. And over time, when the vat is half full, now it's more of the cool, clear liquid than the hot black liquid. And it looks kind of like muddy or murky a little bit, but it's, it's somewhat translucent. And, you know, we can still tell that the hot black is in there, but now it's warm and it's kind of like a little murky. As we continue putting more and more positive in the, the good books, the good classes that we take, the, the meditations that we do, um, the, the audios that we listen to, the, the friends that we make, the people that we associate with, and we start to build up all this positivity it kind of fills that even more. And when, when it's about three quarters to full, it looks like it's all cool, clear liquid. And it even feels cool and to the touch. So we haven't removed any of the negative, but we've diluted it to the point. And the key to that is to not let any more in. You know, if you're, if you're putting the cool, clear liquid in and still putting the hot black liquid in, well, then it's never really going to get totally cool and clear. So we want to be mindful of what we allow in. We want to be the gatekeeper to our own mind. And for me, one of the biggest shifts that I've made in doing that is basically unplugging the TV. 
you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, I have to watch the news. I have to be informed after this, after that. And I can tell you firsthand that if something is going on in the world that you need to know about, you can't hide from it. Someone, somewhere, some way, somehow will feel obligated to inform you, <laughs> no matter how negative it is, and, and you'll find out about it. So, you know, if that's the only reason, then I, I challenge you to unplug. And, and if you're not willing to commit for a lifetime of that, try it for a couple of days. Try for a couple of days to like unplug from anything that you wouldn't want a newborn baby to be thinking about. You know, use that as kind of your guide that like you're treating your mind like it's like it's brand new, like it's this wonderful, amazing, fragile piece of excellence. Because that's it's nothing short of that. And you know, if you want your mind to serve you well, you know, so I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but what I want you to think about is how ideal is your life right now? You know, so if the biggest controlling factor in your life is your mind and your mindset and your life is less than ideal, it kind of goes without saying that maybe you can work on some things to shape your mindset. And a lot of that was written before we were uh, seven years old. So when you take that into account, that during those first seven years of our life, we were in uh, a theta state, which is a semi-hypnotic state, and we're taking in everything. It's all part of our programming. It's, it's, it's the operating system of how we operate in the world through our mindset. And when you adjust your mindset to upgrade your operating system, then you get better results. So this is really what I want to focus on tonight is if anyone, um, I'm not as young as I look. Okay. <laughs> I, I used to have a reel to reel tape recorder, right? With the big seven inch reels. And I used to record, I was in a band and we used to record all our stuff on, uh, on two um, reel to reel tape recorders that we'd record back and forth through a mixing board to, to add tracks and do multi-track recordings. And this is kind of a foreign thing. I mean, now I use Audacity on my computer and I can do infinite amount of tracks and it's all digital <laughs> recordings. It's so much easier. But the, the old um, recorders would have three heads on them. And the first head was actually an erase head. The second head was then the record head. And the third head was the playback head. And the playback head would also loop with the, with the, the record head so that you could get kind of like reverb and echo effects and stuff like that, that sounds would kind of repeat until they diminished. So it, it, was, it was old technology, but it was pretty cool. But the key thing that I want to pay attention to in this metaphor is the erase head. So before recording anything, the, the, the tape could only hold so many uh, bits of information on it. So before recording any new sound onto there, it would erase all of the old recordings that were on there. And even if it was a blank tape, it would erase it to make sure that all of the, the uh, metallic particles in there were aligned and kind of uh, demagnetized so that they could be arranged according to the new music that was being recorded. So I'm going to kind of guide you through a process tonight to do that metaphorically, where it's not about getting rid of that negative chatter in our mind, but we're just going to kind of overwrite it. And if it takes erasing it to overwrite a new program, why not? Right. Um, and I'm also going to prompt you that a lot of times those negative thoughts, that negative chatter in our mind is really, it seems critical at first, but if we can question it and really find out it's positive intention for you, 
that it does actually have a benefit in mind for you. It's, it's not negative. It's not trying to sabotage your life. It's not trying to keep you from earning all the money that you desire. It's not trying to keep you from traveling the world like you want to. It's not trying to keep you from living in a beautiful place. It's not trying to keep you from having the ideal mate. It's, it's, it's actually intended to protect you if you can address it in the right way. And then when you engage it as your protector, it can be a wonderful learning for you. And then you don't have to negate it. You can incorporate it into your other positive thoughts and it can kind of be like, like a gatekeeper. So that's kind of the other metaphor I want to play with tonight is the gatekeeper for your mind. What do you, what do you let in and what do you keep out? So a lot of times I use the, the analogy that the, a computer was created to model the way that the mind works. But if we play that model back on itself, then we can look at the mind like a computer. And the things that we can take in with our five senses is kind of like everything that's on the screen of the computer. It's everything that's in the RAM, the random access memory. It's the things that we can consciously be aware of. Um, it's the, the thoughts and the decisions that we can say, hey, I'm thinking this, or I'm gonna decide this, or it's all that, that conscious awareness. And that's controlled by our will. So the other part of our mind is the unconscious or subconscious, or I like to call the other than conscious mind because uh, I'm not sure if it's below the consciousness or, or if it's totally not conscious, but it's definitely something other than the conscious mind. And that's kind of like the hard drive of the computer. It's all of the things, you know, we take in over 40 million bits of information per second through our five senses. And all of that from the moment we were conceived, maybe even before we were born, uh, we took in all of that information and it's all stored somewhere in our neurology. Doesn't mean we can necessarily access it or utilize it or even consciously ever be aware of what it was or how it got there, but it's all there. And consciously we can only pay attention to five to nine bits of information at any given moment. So it's small by comparison to all the information that's stored on the hard drive. You know, look at, look at the screen on your computer. You know, there's only, there's only so many icons you can put on the screen of your computer before it's full, but yet you can have infinitely more programs stored on your hard drive. And then the next part of the mind that a lot of people don't really include, but it's the superconscious mind. So the superconscious mind is our connection to other minds. So that would be the equivalent of the internet right? We, we have everything, all the information that's stored in our own mind, but we can also go out and connect with other people. We can take classes. Uh, we can learn from others. We can share information. We have friends, we have family, and we share thoughts and ideas with them. Uh, we can send emails back and forth. We can leave voice messages. We can send texts. So we can pass information back and forth through multiple channels and gain access to more than just the information that's on our own hard drive, so to say, and, and be able to access all of that information. But here's the thing, we need some sort of firewall, right? Some sort of uh, antivirus software as well, because thoughts get in that aren't working for us. You know, we wanna, we wanna work out, but I don't feel like going to the gym today, right? Or you know, we want to read that book, but you know, I'm tired and I'm just going to go to bed. I'll read tomorrow. Or we want to work on that new project or new idea. You know, well, I'll, I'll put it off. You know, so what does that mean putting it off? You know, we all have a timeline. And when we're on our timeline and we're doing what we align with, that's where we feel like we're on our path you know, our life path, our life journey. We're, do, we're doing what we're meant to be doing, so to say, according to um, life, the universe, and everything. Uh, but more importantly, according to ourselves, and we get into that state of flow, right? So 
when you're in that flow, it just literally everything just flows, right? It's, it's almost effortless. It's mindless, right? So coming back to being mindless, you know, so I'm, I'm going to guide you tonight to, to get into that flow where, you know, never mind, <laughs> just be, be in it. Right. You know, and, and we can almost like remember to forget about all the things that don't serve us in a way that you can realize that you forgot to remember all the things that do serve you in a way that you can create a state of flow and be a more excellent version of yourself when you connect to this part of yourself that is in that flow state all of the time, when you, when you feel like you're on your path, you know, and we're in that flow state and, and things are just happening. And it, it, it really, you can get to a point where succeeding is effortless, right? It actually takes less effort sometimes to have success in certain areas of your life than if you were pushing and pushing and pushing and nothing seems to happen. So this is, this is what I'd like you to be open to tonight is that, you know, you don't need to say, oh, I'm going to do this so that this happens. No, just play full on, do it, and be curious and open to whatever happens as a result of this. Because really, it's not about having a specific agenda other than to not have a specific agenda. So I, I used to do a... a trance and I'll probably do it somewhere along the line. I don't know if I've done it yet, but it's, it's a concept called the void. And in the void, nothing exists, not even the concept of nothing existing. So the cool thing is from that space of nothing existing, not even the concept of nothing existing, anything is possible, right? So it's when we have stuff in our life and we're coming from something, even if we can reduce it down to really minimal something, we're still starting from something and we're either gonna add to that or subtract from that. Whereas when you're starting from nothingness, then anything is possible. So we're gonna do I guess a variation on that tonight in that I'm going to prompt you to, to be in a state of mindlessness, right? So, you know, Phyllis started off by asking me, what's the difference between hypnosis and meditation? So we're going to explore that full on tonight. We're going to use hypnosis as a tool to get into an ideal state of meditation and somewhat contrary to the name of hypnotic mindful meditation tonight we're going to do hypnotic mindlessness meditation <laughs> we're just going to kind of let go and just really be which which in a in a sense is the truest form of mindfulness is to be mindless right so i don't know Maybe that's, maybe that's my new definition of a dichotomy. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to play with this and we're going to see where it goes. I have like zero script for this, but I do have a lot of stuff in mind as to what I'm going to do for this. If anyone has any um, questions or concerns or things you want me to add in or things like, no, 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 leave that part out. I don't want <laughs> so. Uh, Should I shut my video off? I'm the only one that doesn't. You you can if you want. I mean, it's up okay. to you. I'm okay with it on or off either way. Okay. Um, I'm just going to mute you though. So, yeah, and I, I appreciate, first of all, I appreciate everybody showing up here. Um, it gives me incentive to do it. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, I'm committed that we're going to do this for the month of July. And it's very August. nice of you to do this for us. 
You heard me? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm muting. So, you know, th this is, this, this is for you. And this is for anyone that you, um, that you know. And, and I, I, I used to say, it's for anyone that you know could use it, but you don't know who could use this. You don't know who's going through something. You don't know, you know, people hide stuff really well. And, you know, I've had people that I've, I've just gifted a hypnosis session to them and they had no idea how much they needed it until after they had it. So, you know, I'm going to prompt everybody again before we start to, you know, if you enjoy this, there's probably someone you know who would enjoy this. And if everybody brings one more person, it's going to get me really excited about continuing this. <laughs> um, so, you know, for whoever shows up, I will definitely continue this for the month of July. Uh, but we'll see what happens for August. If um, And I'm going to start to do some some other things to bring in new people as well from my end. So I'm going to, I didn't pre-set up the music, so I'm gonna do this now. We're gonna go back to the original music of my mentor, the great and wonderful Mr. Topher Morrison. So one, one of the things that you can really start to pay attention to is your awareness of what you're paying attention to. So I'd like you to help me, to help you, to become more relaxed in a way that Maybe you can start by feeling it. Or maybe it starts in some other way for you. I invite you to explore and to really begin to experience perhaps the same old aspects of living your life in a new way that you can begin to activate the part of your mind that allows you to relax in such a way that you're not even paying attention to relax. So consider that for a moment. Consider the balance in your life. Harmony. And just get a glance. Sometimes it's not so much how you organize your thoughts around us. 
but it can be more about how you just bring in that sense of wonder. Like really wonder, what would it be like to have an experience of total and complete mindlessness? Now for myself, before really experiencing this, it brought up a little apprehension that if I truly was to experience mindlessness, would I ever rediscover my mind? And I assure you that you will. Only it won't ever be the same. Simply because of the law of contrast. And in a sense, you'd already have to realize what mindlessness is if you've ever been mindful of anything. Because the only way, like when you look at your hand, the only way you can see your hand is to notice it, that everything around it is not you. The only way to truly recognize how to be mindful is to notice that everything around that is And sometimes that mindlessness is a deeper sense of being mindful, to really fully immerse yourself in the moment. I've had people tell me that they could just sit, be still, and even if it didn't seem like there was any breeze, could feel the gentle movement of the air in the room, swaying the hairs on their own. Imagine what that would be like to have that sense so finely tuned. so well prepared to discover very deliberately that you're able to realize and notice there and to be aware of the qualities how soft it is or how warm it is or how calm it is or how cool it is that you can just say to yourself, that chatter in your mind is speechless. And you can tune in to tune out. As you listen to the sound of my voice, the sound of the music guiding you and recognizing just how relaxed you become through hindsight, it's not an illusion. It's an illustration of yourself the way that you can 
through inner vision. See the world to which you belong. In a way that you make a shift. This can prompt you to make a shift and to create a belief and to create a wonderful awareness of good things in a way that this you will gain greater understanding wisdom to become an even better version of who you truly are deep within yourself just what it's like to recognize how you can in a moment, 
I'm going to say some really nice things about your stuff. And I'd like you to believe them. In a way that each one of these thoughts can be like that cool, clear liquid. And wouldn't it be cool to clear your mind? within you these wonderful and positive affirming thoughts in your body and in your mind within your awareness and throughout your life You've experienced many things so far and wide. Even as you go deeper and deeper, can allow you to experience even more of this wonderful, positive, enjoyable experiences. You can do anything you believe you can do. Saying to yourself, You have talents and skills and abilities, don't you? Recognize. I set goals and I reach them. You know what you want out of life. I go after it and I get it. That's right. You do. And people like you. People like you, people like you feel good about yourself. People like you feel good about yourself. You have a sense of pride in who you are. Nothing seems to stop you. You have a lot of determination. You turn problems into advantages. You find the possibilities and things that other people never give a chance. You have a lot of energy. A very lot. You enjoy life. And you can tell it. And so can others. You keep yourself up and looking ahead and loving it. You realize you can accomplish anything that you choose because life is choice and you're choosing to accomplish many wonderful things you're choosing to filter out any negative forces or thoughts or ideas in your life that's right you refuse to let anything negative hold you back or stand in your way as you're playing the recording in your mind, erasing the negative, writing in the new and more positive, wonderful thoughts, connecting to source of 
who you are. You're not afraid of anything or anyone. You have strength. You have conviction. You have confidence. You have tenacity. You're diligent. You like challenges. You don't shy away from them. You meet them head on, face to face. Today, especially. Imagine you're on top of the world and you're going for it. Have a clear picture in your mind of what you want and how you want it to be and how it feels and what you're saying to yourself. See it in front of you. Step into it and realize with real eyes what you want and how you'll get it. And that it's up to you and that you can do it. no roadblocks, and if they were, they would not bother you, because they would just mean that you're alive and running, and that you're not going to stand still for anything, or anyone. Trust yourself. You've got what it takes. You've got all the resources you need. And you're learning. You have plenty of it. And you're learning how to utilize it. Today more than ever. Today you're unstoppable because you're resourceful and you've got yourself together. And today, look how world, here you come. Limitations? You don't even recognize them as limitations. You can overcome and become anything by choice. There is no challenge that you cannot conquer. There is no wall that you cannot climb over. There is no problem that you cannot defeat or turn it around and make it work for you. You notice how you stand tall. And in a way, looking down on all the problems in your life, diminishing. And not so much in a condescending way, but in a way they can diminish because as you learn from them, they're no longer a problem. You deal with them. And as a result, you think, well, And if there are difficult people in your life, never mind. 
You like to deal with people and they like you. You think clearly. You're organized and you're in control of yourself and everything about you. Because you've programmed your mind to take care of you in the best way possible. Because you've decided that you call your shots. And as a result, no one has to call them for you. No one can and no one will. You're responsible. able, able to respond to the world around you. You never blame anyone else for the circumstances of your life. Get out from under those circumstances. You accept your failings and you move past them because they're really just feedback and learning. So you accept them as easily as you accept the rewards for your victories. You expect the very best of what you have to give. So it's not even necessary to demand perfection, but simply expect the very best of what you have to give. And that's what you get. So there's no reason for excuses. an excuse comes up, never mind, just get things done on time in the right way, realize that today you have the inner strength to do more than ever, because you're, you're an exceptional human being. Your goals and your incredible belief in yourself turn your goals into reality. You have the power to live your dreams. You have the power to live your dreams. Believe in them. Believe in yourself. Create a belief that's so strong that there is nothing that diminishes your undefeatable spirit. You think well. You think clear. Because you prepared yourself to make the wonderful decisions that lead you to discover an even better version of yourself when you just stop and pay attention to the spaces that are significantly in between. So in a moment, you'll have an opportunity to take this wonderful feeling. Perhaps you'll call it mindlessness or being mindful or just your ability to, well, you know, never mind whatever you want to call it. You can integrate it fully into every aspect of how you experience living in this world that you've created for yourself to live in this way. That works best for you, isn't it? Time to start now.
when would now be the best time to clear that chatter in your mind and fill it with great and wonderful thoughts like you were just experiencing on a regular ongoing basis so in a moment i'm going to count from one up to five and when i reach five you can kind of like lock all this good wonderful stuff in and propel it into your future so that life just gets better and better and better and simply because if you want it to be better you better do something about it now because you've got a conscious mind and you've got another than conscious mind you've got a awareness that they can work together as one to help you to realize any benefit that you had received from old unresourceful thoughts or beliefs or that quote unquote negative chatter in your mind and to extract purely three wonderful learnings from the experience to let go of that grip to let go of the hold that they have on you for yourself to create a level of harmony where you begin to listen to the spaces in between when you're ready to awaken to this reality you can use all your senses to bring your awareness back not just one or two or three or even four of your senses awakening to this reality now but you can feel it in every cell in your body hear it in the way that you talk to yourself listen to those spaces between the words get a taste of how deliciously wonderful your life truly is getting better and better and better and better as you get ready to wake up and smell all the flowers not just the roses then and only then can you open your eyes and see the world and be in the world with all five of your senses fully awake fully alert and fully aware of just how good it feels to be an even better version of you Hey, Ed. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. I got, on, on late. I I got on late because my daughter reminded me, what is this lady doing? My goodness. Yeah. So, Dude, um, they learn how to drive. <laughs> this is when you need to do meditation when you're driving. <laughs> um, my son turned 21 yesterday. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> so, um, it's not that. My daughter's uh, 21, you know, beginning of the year. I'm like, where'd the time go? So everyone is uh, muted other than myself and Ed right now. But anyone, anyone want to share anything? Any, is anyone back yet? <laughs> take, take all the time you need in the next minute of clock time to bring yourself all the way back into full awareness now. You got a haircut? <laughs> and she, um. I did, but I, I got stuff in my hair because I took a shower uh, right before tonight. 
Hey, hey Carol. Hey, Mark. Hey, Carol. <laughs> hey Ed. I'm just like dazed now. Thank you. I can take a nap. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, anyone with question, comment, concern, things I need to know? Things I don't need to know. <laughs> For me, it doesn't work. This is a whisper. I only hear you. I heard about 30% the whole session. Between the music and the whispering, it doesn't match my my degree of hearing. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure this this one came out good, but I won't know until I listen to the recording. I. Yeah, I found the music kind of drowned you, drowned you out, too. Really? Okay. Oh. I had it down. I've used this music before, and I had it down as low as I, as I normally do. Maybe i got to go lower with it. Yeah, I raised the volume on my car, but it's, I thought it was fine. But again, maybe just, you know, I louder the volume on my car. I didn't have when any I, problem I'm, with it on my end. Yeah, when, okay. I'm in, when I'm out of the car, my phone's not as loud as the car. So most of the time I was in the car, so it wasn't a problem. See, it's, it's hard for me to gauge it, so I have to go by what the what the volume control says, and it's really hard to get it accurately, but... I can, I can like, hear you now, right? I have no problem hearing you now, but yeah. when the music is on and you whisper, yeah, like half of what you say is quieter, then well, you know... There, there were parts where I was whispering on purpose, so... Right. And, you know, Mark, I was able to hear you pretty well, but... I just wasn't able to sit and meditate, so I started walking and listening okay. to you while I was walking, kind of, you know, like a walking meditation, and it worked, because sometimes I find meditation is really difficult for me. Right. You know, so the walking is helping. I wasn't, of course, able to close my eyes, but <laughs> it, it served its purpose. You, I, I could you, be a problem. Yeah, you put me in the Zen, so it certainly worked. You always, you always um, do a great class every Thursday. I really enjoy it. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate that. So yeah, it's really helpful. My my ego likes hearing it, but what I'd much <laughs> rather hear is I'd rather hear that you told a couple of other people that show up. <laughs> so I will certainly tell my friends. Can you make a flyer, Mark? Yeah, maybe something I can put on Facebook. Yeah, I'll, I'll make something cool. I, I actually just got this new software, so I made something for my uh, for my business coaching. I'll share it real quick. Um, Could you send it to me on an email? Like yeah, as an attachment. Yeah, I'll send something in the email that um, that you can send out. I'm just I'm gonna that give would you be great. Example. I'm going to give you an example of something that I created that's not for this, but it's for, for something else. But yeah, this is my, um, I'll, I'll move out of the way. I like that. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. So, yeah, it just keeps looping. So, yeah, it's, it's more for, um, you know, for, uh, for people that I coach that own their own business. If we could them. get, if we could get like a picture, right. you know, that has all your information, like kind of like what you have on your, your virtual background and right. then the time and the date of the class. And then I can just share it on my Facebook page. I really think you'd probably get a lot more people because I have a lot of friends on Facebook that would be okay. interested in this. Cool. I, that's, that's my homework. I will make something. I will send it awesome. out. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, and, you know, I've done it in the past. Sometimes I create like a, a Facebook event and then people can share the event. Oh, that's good um, too. Yeah. Yeah. But what I found is people said they were coming and then never, never signed up for the Zoom link. So I don't know. I don't know. It's, a, it's funny. I, I, I help everyone else with their marketing. <laughs> I need to apply it to myself, I guess. I so. would say just keep trying. Just keep yes. doing it over and over again, and then eventually it's going to stick. Well, this is like number 18, I think, of, of these <laughs> classes. So, Oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah. This, it came on like... Do you have it, an Instagram page or a Twitter page? I, I'm sure I have a Twitter page. I don't think I've ever used it. 
I do have an Instagram page and I way underuse it. Um, well, maybe that might Instagram, be a good tool I got, for you. I got a lot of people from Instagram. And Instagram, you get people from all over the place. It's so yeah. easy to advertise. It's like a dollar a day. And you can do six days, five days, whatever it is, just to get to open, you know, cast a wider net. Because I'm on Instagram with my with my paintings and Twitter, and I have so many followers. So, you know, it might it might help you if you did an Instagram or Twitter page. Okay, yeah, I have I have an Instagram. It's ny underscore hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll follow you. Yeah. But especially now that you have it for July and there's no charge, yeah. you're, you're going to get a lot of interested parties. I think. Yeah, it's been no charge since day one. So that was, right, right. That was my way of, you know. My, Not my enough friend, people know friend, that, though. My friend who dropped out on me was supposed to help me with this. But um, but I decided to do it, you know. A good idea is a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I, I really appreciate the feedback on that. And any sure. help in, in promoting it, um, it's, it's all the better for all of us, right? Absolutely. Uh, more people we relax, the better that everybody else feels. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially when you're driving as much as I'm driving. I'm like, holy moly, these people need to relax. <laughs> I should have a I should have a bumper sticker with your name on it. Call this number on Thursday, Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's people are back on the road again, you know? I mean, for a while, it was oh, like no goodness. one was on the road, you know? I mean... It was awesome. It was so like, awesome. I was <laughs> driving around. I, I could get what I get done in two days in one day, just from, like, traffic. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, you know, and I realized, I mean, even, even for myself, I was doing a lot less driving because nothing was open and, you know, certainly not yeah. great, nothing was open. So, like, hey, I'd go and get gas can't. and I'd be like, I can't even remember the last time I put gas in my car. This is so weird, you know? Like, yeah, and then I was, I was like going out on a weekend and I was like, you know, weekends usually I'm doing open houses or showings or whatever. And I'm like, nothing to do on a weekend i'm like this is weird and i was like doing stuff around the house like furniture building furniture and stuff in the yard i built a bar <laughs> i started working on building a couch for the uh the fire pit area and then honestly i got so busy now i haven't even looked at it i've been uh slacking so i really gotta get that done okay well i thank everybody for being here tonight really thank appreciate it look forward to seeing you next week uh we're gonna end a couple minutes early tonight um, but I really, really appreciate you being here and appreciate the feedback and I will get a flyer out to everybody along with the prompt for the replays. And for now, what I've, what I've done is I've, I've been sharing the, the YouTube channel with everybody. So, um, subscribe to the channel, uh, click the little right, bell I'll thingy go. on there and, um, and then you'll get notified when, when this, when this next post is up. Okay. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank you, Thanks, Mark. Mark. Thanks, Appreciate Mark. it. Okay. Be well, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Mark.